Hello everyone and welcome back. Well, in this episode we're going to take a look at the new release from AK, the Range Rover 88. And yep, here's the side of the box. we got some color plates. We'll take a look at those a little closer later on. Let's open up the box here real quick. Let's see what everything looks like inside. Well, no surprise here. When we open up the box, what do we find? Well, plastic parts. <laughs> I guess that's to be expected, right? As for the plastic itself, well, just a Real quick look here through the cellophane wrap. They look nice. The parts look really nice. I don't see really any flash or seam lines, anything like that that will need to be taken care of, at least not a lot of it. So I'm looking forward to that. Should be an easy build in that regard. Moving our way down to the bottom of the box. Well, there's a small photo etch fret. that will add some little details, I'm sure, throughout the process. And we have, oh, once again, we have a mystery box similar to what we had with the Unimog. Let's see what's inside here. Open it up. Come on, Rick. There we go. Shake it out. Oh, we have the hard top. So they've packaged that separately. I'm sure that's just for safety purposes. Again, the detail looks great on this, so it should be great to install this onto the kit as well. And also inside the box, we have the tires, and these would be just the rubber type tires. Uh, no option in this box as compared to, say, the Unimog, no resin replacement set here. We have, of course, our clear plastic and our decals, or decals, as some might call them. Let's take a quick look through the instruction booklet. Of course, it's always a great idea to familiarize yourself with the project before getting started. As I'm flipping through these pages here, it's becoming pretty obvious that there's a lot of detail going into this kit. A lot of work, especially in the beginning of the booklet here, so the opening steps of the construction is going to be concerning itself with, well, putting together or constructing the engine, the suspension, the drivetrain, that's all included in this kit. So again, highly detailed, looking forward to that. In the latter stages of the booklet, obviously we start construction of the upper body here, so now we're dealing with larger body panels. The number of pages devoted to this particular area is quite a bit less than the first part where we're detailing out the chassis and suspension. And then of course, at the rear of the booklet, we start having our decal options and markings options, which are presented in the booklet with color callouts. And there's some really nice choices in here, and yep, I'm gonna actually choose one of these instead of trying to go out and find something brand new. I'm gonna choose one of these to be the color profile that I'll be painting up this vehicle here. Stay tuned for that in just a second. Well, here we go with the construction, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time detailing out every construction step here, but as you can see, first step here is we're gonna start working on the engine itself, and then quickly we start putting together the chassis and the drivetrain and such. And as you can see, quite a few parts here, but it really is making into a very nicely detailed kit. Of course, all this detail lends itself to quite a few different opportunities for, for us modelers if how to display this model later on. Perhaps we want to show it wrecked and flipped over. Well, the detailing's there to show the underside of the body. We could open up the hood. Maybe there's engine trouble. Yep, that's there as well. That's an opportunity as well. Once I do have all the undersides taken care of now, as I mentioned earlier, flipping through the instructions, we start moving to the upper body panels. And this goes together much quicker than that earlier section here because, well, the parts are bigger and the fit is fantastic. Alignment is great. Everything is good. The engineering is great on these. So this goes together very, very nicely. No issues here at all. And in terms of timing, well, this could certainly be a weekend project for sure. It doesn't take too long till we get to this stage here where I could do a little bit of test fit and everything seems to be aligning perfectly. We're ready to get ready for painting. <laughs> I have to admit, after this all comes together here and I get to see it on my bench, it's quite a small vehicle, much smaller than I was anticipating. Well, let's get on to that painting. So I mentioned earlier that I was gonna use one of the color profiles found in the, in the instruction booklet here, and that's this one here from British European Airlines from Heathrow, 1969, something about this. It's just the classic colors, it's just, Maybe understated, yes, but I just, it really spoke to me. So this is the color scheme that I'm gonna be following throughout. Now, of course, there are color callouts in the instruction booklet, but unfortunately, I didn't have any of the exact color paints, especially the blue color that the instructions called out for. So I did my own paint mix here. I'll flash those colors across the screen here. I think it's a pretty close approximation. I think it looks good to my eyes, so <laughs> we're gonna go for it. Oh, and now we get to do some fun things like masking off <laughs> some paint colors here. So looking at the color callouts and even some of the references, you can clearly see that there is a black stripe 
just along the top edge of the blue body panels here. So we're just gonna mask off that blue section here and we'll give that a nice coat of black, just a nice layer of black, lay in that stripe. And then once I have that black stripe in place and it's had a little bit of time to dry, I'll go ahead and mask that area off. And now I can continue on adding the white to the upper body. And yes, we've added more masking tape here as well. So we've got our little Range Rover and tape bondage, if you will. Honestly, in terms of paint schemes, this is a very easy paint scheme to put together. The masking is relatively simple. I'm just not very practiced at it, so I'm always a little hesitant going into it. But just once we get those stripes in, then the upper body, well, that's a separate part, so that can just be painted white all by itself. And then it becomes time to pull off the masking tape here. Let's make sure everything comes off and hopefully my lines are good. I did pop off a mirror, but I do have that, so I'll put that back on a little bit later. Carefully pull those off, making sure the paint doesn't get removed. And oh, this doesn't look so bad at all. I don't think I have too much to clean up here, if any. Nice. Actually, fairly successful. Huh, well done, Rick. Another really quick test fit here. Yep, that's starting to look the part. Nice. Now I can start adding just a few more details here as we start pulling this thing all together. For the headlamps, I'm using those metallic pens again. This is chrome. Just painting the inside or drawn into the inside of the lens there. Of course, we have a clear part that goes over the top, but this is nice and reflective and really makes those headlights pop. Next come those clear parts, so we'll just install our front windshields there, or windscreens, and the parts just pop into place. And I'm securing these plastic parts, the clear plastic parts, with a white PVA glue rather than liquid cement. Just want to ensure I don't have any drips or runs that would ruin these clear parts. And that's really the majority of the painting, at least the hard part. The rest of it is only the smaller details. So, of course, I did paint the, the seats that get installed in the interior and the steering wheel and dashboard and things like that. And there's some decals that go onto the dashboard. Of course, the decals were also added to the, or the markings to the exterior of the vehicle here. And here we are right now. We're going to weather this out a little bit later on. But before I do that, let's take a little break from the Range Rover and let's get started on our base. A special thank you to all my amazing Patreon members for your incredible support. Your contributions help me continue to create content for this channel. If you're not already a member, I invite you to join our Patreon community. As a member, you'll gain access to exclusive behind-the-scenes content, early releases, and more. I hope you'll consider joining Patreon and supporting this channel. Thank you very much. Okay, now for this base. Well, of course, the natural environment for this Range Rover is going to be on uh, airport tarmac. Well, most specifically, Heathrow. And, you know, we'll get to the tarmac here in just a second, but as I'm visualizing this coming together in a small scene, I'm going like, ah, it needs a little height. Otherwise, we're just basically have a piece of concrete and a car sitting on top of it. I thought, what, what better to kind of set the stage that this is actually at an airport, give it a little bit of height, but let's make a windsock. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never made a scale model windsock before, so I, I kinda, kind of experimenting here. But what I do have is tissue paper, which I've folded over, double-sided, folded over, with, some, and just glued together with some white glue just to kind of give it a little extra strength and durability here, and a little extra thickness. And so we need a conical shape here, so I'm kind of etching out some lines here that will be the size and the shape. And using the straight edge, just going to put a fold there, and this will be our attachment point. This is all, you're watching experiments on the fly right now. So I just happen to be filming as I'm doing my experiment, and you're watching it happen in real time. I was totally ready for this to fail, fail miserably, but I was kind of surprised. This turned out to be, well, you'll see in just a second here, but this actually turned out pretty, pretty okay. And this is the, the final version I ended up using, matter of fact. I give everything an overcoat of the Mod Podge, and this will just help solidify it so it doesn't droop over time, get you know soft with moisture. And then it's just a matter of painting out in the distinctive orange and white stripes. Nice pops of color here for our scene. Of course, our colorful windsock also needs a colorful pole or flagpole to be hanging off of. Piece of styrene rod also painted in the same orange and white colors. Well, that all needs to dry for a little while before I really feel like moving on. So let's go back to the Range Rover and start with the weathering here. Notice, no oil paints this time. We're going to use enamel paints. 
And a lot of the reason for that is, is these vehicles, of course, were well maintained. You know, they've been washed and, and such, and they're driving around the tarmac. It's not going to be a lot of heavy weathering on here. And I thought these filters are going to do a good job of simulating light dust, a little bit of grime, and that, those type of effects without over weathering, which I kind of have a tendency to do. So this is almost kind of like putting the brakes on me just by using materials that make it difficult for me to go too far. Even though I changed the filters, I find myself applying the colors very much in the same methods and manner that I would be if it were oil paint. So I'm, I'm trying to be as controlled as possible here. The filters themselves, the paints themselves, they're very, very thin in nature, very basically almost transparent. They just are there to discolor. So especially like on the rooftop up here, just light washes of the filters just adds a little bit of dust and dirt grime, pools in some of those areas, adding a little bit of definition to some of those different body parts. On the lower areas where maybe more dust would kick up or splashes of rainwater or, or such, I could add the filters in a little more of an aggressive manner here, just a little thicker straight from the jar, or in this cap case, I actually used it straight from the lid where it's a little bit thicker. Tap those into place, let them sit for just a few moments here. I'm not really trying to stain anything right now. I just want a little bit of color. I'm working, working in layers here, slowly but surely. Come back with a brush has some odorless thinner on it and just carefully start taking off some of that color leaving some color in other areas S like I said slowly but surely we'll start building up a little bit of that you know spray from the tarmac some dust accumulations just a little bit of discoloration feeling like the overall weathering in this model is starting to come come together it's it, again it's not overly weathered but there's a little bit of interest it tells a bit of a story what I am finding is that the filters themselves didn't add enough definition so let's turn to something else I don't use very often this is panel liners of course panel liners are commonly commonly used especially in the aircraft world I just kind of put a few drops of the panel liner into some of these edges here just to let it flow around here and that little bit darker color I think will just add that little definition I'm looking for and just define the shapes. I do let the panel liners dry in place for about 15 minutes or so just so it sets up a bit but it's not completely dry. Then I'll come back with a q-tip or a cotton swab just just moistened with a little bit of odorless thinner and clean up any excess that happens to be around some of those panels. And I think that's going to be about it for the weathering on the Range Rover. It's subtle, it's light, but I think it's appropriate for an airport vehicle. Like I said, they do go in for servicing, washings and such, and of course they're not driving through the mud like some off-road vehicle. So with that ready to go, let's return back to our tarmac, our base here. Our little piece of the Heathrow tarmac is going to be built on this 4x6 piece of foam. It's a small piece of foam, it's going to be a compact scene, but as I mentioned earlier, this Range Rover in of itself, it's a fairly small vehicle. That paintbrush will now represent where the windsock is going to go in the corner, and now we can start texturing the tarmac. I begin by spreading out AK Terrain's asphalt. Now this is a fairly fine grit texture here, the acrylic paste, and I'll let that dry. But once it dried, it had a little bit too much texture to it for a nice you know, tarmac sort of situation. So I thinned out some spackling paste, gave it a quick wipe over the top of it, allowed that to dry, and I had the texture I was looking for. Now it's time to add a little personality here. We'll scribe in some expansion lines. Nothing too precise, not following any sort of diagram here, just making sure that they're more or less even, <laughs> even and straight so it does look like a tarmac. In terms of painting, well, just 
just kind of winging it here, just adding some colors on there. These are gray tones, gray brown tones, tan tones and such, directly onto the tarmac itself, and then just spreading them out with the paintbrush. Well, yes, I'm winging it, but I'm also being somewhat careful here. So the different panels are the different sections of concrete. I'll vary the colors slightly in some cases, just to give it a little bit more visual interest. And then once again, I turn back over to these inks, which I'm really starting to enjoy. This is sooty black, so it's a, again a blackish gray color. And just emphasizing some of these expansion lines, dropping it in there, much like a panel liner might do something to that in that nature. And then again, letting that set for a few moments and then coming back in with the cotton swab and cleaning up any excess. Now it's time to add some distinctive runway marking sort of markings and <laughs> indications here. This again using masking tape, just taping off some different stripes and different patterns here. I'm not following any sort of reference at all here. Rather than use, say, the airbrush or even a paintbrush, I'll dab on some color using, in this case, white, using a sponge. This, just the application by using sponge gives it a worn appearance, and so that's great. I've got a few masks here, so I'll just add a... I don't know, a marking, a runway marking. I'm not sure exactly what this is going to be. That was a little bit too rough for my taste. So I did come back in and tighten it up the edges a little bit with just a regular paintbrush, just filling in some of the blanks. And as a final step, some pigments, once again, into the expansion cracks, bring out some of the, you know, more natural elements. Yes, the dirt and dust will actually get across the runway itself. And this will tie in nicely with the dirt and dust that we added to the Range Rover itself. Set it all in place. We have the windsock there in the corner. There it is fluttering in the breeze. And at this point, we are finished with our little scene. Yes, it's a very simple little vignette, if you will, here. Very simple base, very simple scene with a very wonderful kit sitting on top of it. That Range Rover from AK is absolutely a dream to build. Beyond the six different examples shown in the pamphlet. There are so many real world examples of this that your imagination can come wild. So if you enjoyed this series, if you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel even further, please, I do have a Patreon page. I'd love to see you over there and see your support over there as well. Until the next time, everybody, take care and happy modeling.